you have just been issued the modular, lightweight, load-carrying equipment known as MOLLE. MOLLE is a modular load-bearing system designed to enhance the survivability and lethality of the modern soldier and marine. MOLLE is a replacement for the current all-purpose, lightweight, individual carrying equipment, or ALICE, and components of the Integrated Individual Fighting System, or IIFS, including the Enhanced Tactical Load-Bearing Vest. The MOLLE system consists of the following main components. The fighting load vest with pockets, the waist pack, the main rucksack, the sleep system carrier, the patrol pack, the frame, sustainment pockets, six foot lashing straps, hydration bladder, and repair kit. A common vest is provided for all soldiers and marines with specialized removable pockets for rifleman, pistol, saw gunner, grenadier, and medic or corpsman configuration. The MOLLE system provides far more load carrying capabilities than the ALICE and other fielded systems. However, proper net is required in order for the system to be used to its maximum capabilities. These capabilities will now be demonstrated to assist soldiers and marines with familiarization of the system. The vest modularity allows for commanders to tailor the loads to meet mission needs without unnecessary extra pockets and gear. The vest is designed to reduce heat buildup on the back with minimum area of coverage of the H-harness design. The wide shoulder straps help distribute the load without the need for excessive padding that can hinder mobility and sighting a weapon. The rifleman configuration is designed to hold three double 30 round magazine pockets. Two fragmentation grenade pockets are also worn by the rifleman along with two canteen or general purpose pouches. The pistol configuration holds four single nine millimeter magazine pockets, two fragmentation grenades, and two canteen or general purpose pouches. The saw gunner accommodates two 200 round magazine pockets, two 100 round magazine pockets, and two canteen or general purpose pouches. The saw gunner also gets two double 30 round magazine pockets. The 40 millimeter grenadier configuration consists of 12 single high explosive grenade pockets, four double high explosive grenade pockets, two double pyrotechnic round pockets, two double 30 round magazine pockets, and two canteen or general purpose pouches. Medics and corpsmen will receive four zippered medical pockets for the vest and two double magazine pockets and two canteen or general purpose pouches. There will also be a specialized medical bag that has an additional four removable medical pockets attached to it. The canteen or general purpose pouch has a variety of uses. When using as a canteen carrier, simply slide the top flap down inside the back of the pouch before inserting the canteen and cup. Allow the V-shaped straps to pass over the neck of the canteen and fasten the buckle. For all other applications, pull the top flap out, insert the V-shaped strap under the webbing on the top flap and secure the plastic fastener on the front of the pouch. This pouch is able to hold one stripped down MRE, five M16 M4 magazines, or ANPVS 7 goggles and various other items. The side pockets on the pouch are designed for first aid dressings, water purification tablets, or other small equipment. Size adjustments to the vest are made in the following manner. Remove the stiffened webbing adjustment tabs from the two slots on the vest belt. Place the vest on the body. Position both vest panels so they fit comfortably on the torso. The panels should fit close together on the front of the torso with approximately one and a half inches between them. Secure the webbing adjustment tabs and wear the vest as shown. To fit extremely narrow torsos, remove each of the one inch webbing from the two metal friction buckles on the back of the belt. Slide the vest panels towards the center back of the belt until a proper fit is achieved. Secure the webbing adjustment tabs and wear the vest as shown. Note that with narrow waists, the metal friction buckle on the belt is not used. 
Once the belt is adjusted properly, adjust the one and a half inch wide waist belt webbing and side release buckle to fit. Stow the remaining webbing in the keeper buckle and tuck free running ends of webbing in the vest panel tunnels. To adjust the height of the vest, position the bottom of the vest no less than two inches above the wearer's hip bones to allow space for proper use of the pack hip belt. Adjust the webbing equally on the four metal buckles on the back of the vest. Secure the free running ends of all webbing with the elastic keepers or tape. Please pause the tape here to review and practice what you've just seen. Pockets can be located on the vest per unit SOP or personal preference. The pockets are secured to the vest with the interlocking attachment system. This secure attachment system allows for pockets to be removed or repositioned as needed. To properly attach a pocket, choose the desired attachment point on the vest panel. Line up the top of the pocket even with the top of the nearest horizontal 1 inch webbing that goes across the panels. Insert the pocket attachment strap down the one and a half inch channel, then behind the one inch webbing on the back of the pocket. Continue weaving the attaching strap behind the horizontal webbing on the vest and the webbing on the back of the pocket until the pocket is secured along its entire length. This attachment system is extremely secure and stable when used properly. Do not simply place the attaching strap through the vest webbing without the interlocking weave. This pocket will not be secure if attached in this manner. Please pause the tape here to review and practice what you've just seen. The Molly Ruck consists of a main ruck, patrol pack, sleep system carrier, and frame. The shoulder strap suspension of the frame is adjusted by securing the one inch webbing around the frame in the appropriate location using the slide buckle. The proper location is determined by donning the frame and fastening the waist belt while wearing the vest and positioning the shoulder straps so that there is complete contact along the entire shoulder strap. After the one inch webbing is secured around the frame to hold the shoulder straps in place, wrap the one and a half inch webbing around the crossbar and secure with the slide buckle. Please pause the tape here to review and practice what you've just seen. The rucksack is attached to the frame around the top slot on the frame with a three bar buckle and webbing. The sides of the ruck are attached to the frame by using the metal buckles as toggles through the vertical openings. The sleep system carrier is attached directly below the rucksack in the same manner. It is sized to accommodate the modular sleep system. When the sleep system carrier is secured, the top opening is oriented 180 degrees to the frame for easy access to the flap and opening. The straps which close the rucksack are inserted through the webbing loops on the sleep system carrier to prevent the sleep system carrier from bouncing.
The rucksack has two large removable 500 cubic inch sustainment pouches which attach to the side of the rucksack using the same interlocking attachment system as the vest pockets. These sustainment pouches each contain two D-rings on the sides which allow them to be carried by the general purpose sling for alternate uses. The front pocket on the rucksack is designed to accommodate a Claymore mine. The Claymore mine pocket also contains a removable bandolier which holds up to six additional 30 round magazines which can be slung independently of the ruck. The top lid of the rucksack is a clear map case with a hook and loop closure. The rucksack contains a collar which is secured with a cord and barrel lock. Inside the rucksack, against the back panel, is a removable radio pocket designed to carry a Singar's radio. This removable pocket contains D-rings on each side to allow the radio to be carried by the general purpose sling when a ruck is not needed. When the radio must be carried in the rucksack, the radio pocket is secured to the four black metal loops on the inside of the rucksack using the one-inch webbing. In the assault pack load, the radio is intended to be carried in the patrol pack, which detaches from the top of the frame and rucksack. The patrol pack is intended to be worn on top of the load-bearing vest. The patrol pack has a volume of more than 1,500 cubic inches, including the outside pocket. There are two black metal loops at the top of the back panel of the patrol pack. These loops are attachment points for the shoulder straps. The two outer loops are to provide better compatibility with bulky armor and clothing, and the inside loops are used for narrower chest and neck circumferences. To attach the patrol pack to the ruck and frame, wrap the one-inch webbing on the top of the patrol pack around the top rail of the frame and secure with the side release buckle. The bottom of the patrol pack is secured to the male side release buckles that normally close the rucksack flap. There is a multi-purpose waist pack which can be worn in one of four ways. It can be attached to the bottom of the assault pack by passing the stiffened web straps with the female side release buckles through the four webbing keepers on the bottom of the assault pack. It can be attached directly to the FLC by utilizing the stiffened webbing tabs on back woven into the corresponding slots on the back of the FLC. It can be carried in the standalone configuration by utilizing the attached two inch wide waist belt. This method allows the user to rotate the waist pack around in front to easily access the contents of the pack without removing the FLC or assault pack. Note, when not being used in this mode, ensure the attached waist belt is stowed into the tunnel on back of the waist pack. The waist pack can also be attached directly to the main pack by passing the side release buckles and straps through the webbing below the Claymore pouch on the main pack. Emergency doffing of the rucksack can be accomplished by sharply pulling upward on the quick release lanyard to disengage the quick release buckle and letting the ruck fall away. The ruck can also be doffed when in the prone position by simply activating one of the shoulder strap quick releases and letting the ruck fall off by twisting to one side. To reattach the quick release buckle, simply insert the male portion into the female portion and push until the latch tab clicks. Do not try to push down on the latch tab. Get to know your Molly system and experiment with different load configurations. Get used to removing items that are not needed so that the load is as clean and streamlined as possible. There are several possible load configurations. Five common configurations are the light fighting load, which consists of the load-bearing vest and waist pack. The assault pack load consists of the load-bearing vest, waist pack, and patrol pack. The light rucksack load consists of the items from the assault pack load plus the rucksack and frame. The intermediate rucksack load consists of the items from the light rucksack load plus the side sustainment pockets on the ruck. Full rucksack load consists of the items from the intermediate rucksack load 
plus the sleep system carrier. The large sustainment pockets can be removed from the ruck and fastened to the LBV belt or carried with a GP sling. The sustainment pockets can also be added to the side of the patrol pack to nearly double its capacity. All of the large pockets of the Molly system have D-rings on the sides to allow them to be slung with a GP sling. Now that you are familiar with the Molly system, take some time to tape up all of the loose webbing ends to eliminate snag hazards. Scrape dirt and dust from item using a brush that will not cut into the fabric. Hose or wash the item in a pail of water using mild detergent or soap. Rinse thoroughly with clean water. Do not use chlorine bleach, yellow soap, cleaning fluids, or solvents that will discolor or deteriorate the item. Dry the item in shade or indoors. Do not dry in direct sunlight, direct heat, or open flame. Do not launder or dry item in fixed commercial home type laundry equipment. Do not attempt to dye or repair. Turn in for repair or replacement. Remember, extremely dirty or damaged equipment can eventually fail to perform its intended function. Our mission is to provide soldiers and Marines with the best combat equipment possible. We are interested in hearing from you regarding Molly. If you have any questions or comments which can enhance the Molly system, please feel free to contact the SBCCOM load-bearing team at DSN 256-5453 or commercial at area code 508-233-5453. If you have any comments concerning any other SBCCOM commodities, such as clothing, individual equipment, food, shelters, or airdrop items, call our hotline at DSN 256-5341 or commercial at area code 508-233-5341. The manufacturer of the Molly system is Specialty Plastic Products of Dunmore, Pennsylvania. To procure components directly from the manufacturer, contact Specialty Plastics at area code 570-961-2042.